Hi guys, Brian from oldcamreview.blogspot.com. I'm here today to show you a camera that's got some buzz on the web lately. It's the Konica Hexar AF. Actually, AF was not a real designation for the camera, but uh, since the RF, which is the rangefinder M mount version of the camera, came out, um, they uh, threw on, you know, the general population threw on the AF. Um, AF stands for autofocus. This is a really cool camera. It's probably one of my favorite cameras. Um, it's a uh, fixed lens 35mm uh, camera um, with a 35mm uh, f2 Konica lens which is uh, uh, compared very often to the uh, Leica Summicron uh, 35 f2. Uh, it's, not a, it's not actually a uh, f2 copy but it, it uh, has some pretty good uh, resolution and contrast and, and everything. It's really a nice very sharp lens. Um, again, it's a fixed lens camera, so there's no interchangeable lens here. It does have a built-in lens hood, which is kind of fun. Um, I just want to give you a walk around of the camera and uh, uh, hopefully uh, give you some information about it. Um, it's a really interesting camera. It's fully motorized, um, autofocus. It's not a rangefinder per se, where you don't uh, have the split image uh, in the viewfinder. It is a viewfinder camera with autofocus. Um, so. You, it's shooting sort of rangefinder style without the actual rangefinder functionality. Um, it's got auto advance, auto focus, uh, there's a self timer built in. Um, uh, there's a lot of customization as well. You can uh, set the camera up, you know, for full full manual. Um, it's got a program mode, it's got a, a aperture priority mode. Uh, or fully manual where you can set the, uh, the shutter speed and aperture. Um, has exposure compensation. Um, you can also pre-select focus um, for, you know, street shooting if you wanted to set, you know, let's say it at f11 or 16, and uh, you know, and uh, set your um, your focal length, you know, at six feet or whatever. You can go out and just shoot without actually having to worry about focus. So more for shooting from the hip type thing. Um, it, it, you know, it is a, sort of a, a cult camera. Um, you know, people who know this camera really know the quality of the lens. <clears throat> and they know that the contrast and the sharpness and all that stuff is right there. Um, you know, and if you use like great films with this camera, like Portra 400 or, um, you know, any of the, you know, Fuji 400H or, you know, you know T-Max or, you know, black and white or whatever, you're going to have great, great results with this camera. It really is, um, I would say, in, in the Leica class of cameras for not much money. Uh, the only problem is with this camera is it's no longer made and um, it's no longer supported by Konica. Um, and so getting parts or getting repairs in these cameras are, are very, very difficult. Um, but uh, all in all, like I said, a great camera and there's some really interesting features and, uh, and stuff. So uh, here, if you turn it on to uh, program mode, uh, this is the mode selector switch. And if you switch that to P, um, it, you know, it'll work in general program mode. But as that works, if you set your aperture to, let's say, 2.8 or uh, even F2, it's going to try and get close enough to that aperture and, and then adjust everything uh, where it can. But if it can't and, it, and the exposure meter finds that it's out of range, it'll adjust the, uh, the aperture for you. Uh, but if you preset it something like, you know, 5.6 or... Uh, Eight or eleven or whatever, or any any of the intermediate speed uh, aperture settings. Um, you know, again, it's going to try and get as close as it can to that to give you a proper exposure. Um, so yeah, the the aperture settings are set right here in this knob here, and it is all um, you know fly by wire. It's not uh, nothing on the lens. There's no mechanical process going on between this and the uh, the lens it's all electronically controlled uh, which is really kind of kind of interesting and, and it's very fast and it works smoothly well, you know, one criticism I do have about this camera is that the uh, menu system is very sort of arcane and uh, outdated and really just kind of bizarre in some ways but um, it's probably one of the worst uh, user interfaces I've found but 
like anything, if you spend the time to learn it, you know, it becomes say, second nature and you're not really going to have a problem. But uh, you do need to spend some time with the camera to get to know it. Uh, but I, I really think that the, uh, the time and the effort involved in learning <coughs> this camera really, really will be worth it. Um, it you're going to be really astounded by the results. Just beautiful, beautiful pictures from this camera. <coughs> Excuse me. One other really cool mode is the, uh, it has a silent mode uh, here, so, but that requires a, uh, a number of steps. So um, basically what happens is you'll turn the camera off, you'll press the MF button, and then turn it to P. And then up in the screen, you'll see where it says L0. I don't know if you can read that or not, but that's low uh, low mode or whatever but it's it's basically a silent mode and this camera really is quiet um, definitely quieter than, than a Leica than any Leica that I've used um, it's it's really just super stealthy I, I mean, if I'm outside and there's any noise at all I can't even tell if I've taken a picture I really need to look at the, the frame counter I'm gonna shoot a that's the sound right there that's it very quiet it is slower when you're using the silent mode so because what it does is it slows down the uh, the focusing speed to make it very quiet the film advance goes slower as well uh, to make it a lot more quiet um, if you put it back into the normal mode the camera is still super quiet it's it's really almost not even necessary to, to go into that super stealth mode but it is definitely a little bit louder but not not anything uh, considerable um, you know I, I shoot this camera all the time and it really is just quiet I mean you, you, you know we're right next to the microphone right now so it's gonna sound a little bit louder but um, you know when, once you get this uh, this camera outside nobody's really gonna notice this it's it's almost as close in uh, <laughs> to, a, to a digital camera uh, and cer certainly when it's widening the film that's that's super quiet um, so yeah there's program mode aperture priority um, and then full manual mode here uh, you would adjust your shutter speed in full manual mode using the uh, these left and right arrows which are the up and down arrows so you would uh, you know, if you're going up in speed to 1 250th, and again, this is another caveat with this camera is 1 250th is the highest shutter speed you can use. Uh, a lot of people do have a problem with that, and I can, I can kind of understand why. Uh, the only thing is, is if you're going out and you're going to shoot outside, you can use an ND filter or a neutral density filter, which will cut down the, uh, the sunlight into the camera and then uh, make it a little bit easier to shoot. Um, this really is a good light, low light, street, shadow kind of, um, just you know indoor camera I mean it's great the f2 lens is fast enough to really uh, get some stuff and you're using 400 or 800 speed film it's uh, it's great and it is a, a DX uh, camera and it's automatic uh, ISO uh, inside of the camera here you know pretty pretty ordinary stuff nothing really super spectacular but again you can see the contacts for the DX um, film in here and uh, they really are just really nice cameras the uh, you know this is the little uh, latch here is, is all metal and it folds back into the camera um, the view in the viewfinder is really very nice it offers uh, parallax uh, compensation so the whole frame line will move depending upon how close or how far away the uh, the subject is that you're photographing uh, there is a hot shoe the, the flash on this camera also shoots always at full power and the, the camera will compensate via aperture or shutter speed to, uh, to give you a perfect exposure. Uh, I haven't done a lot of flash shooting with this camera. Um, I haven't really, I'm not really a big uh, flash guy when it comes to like my range finders and street shooting and stuff like that. So, uh, But uh, the pictures that I have uh, taken and the pictures I've seen with it uh, using the flash have always been very very nice and very well exposed and the camera really does a, a really nice job with it um, some other features here is a self timer manual focus and then again these are all adjusted with these two buttons here um, and you can uh, do your exposure compensation by hitting the select button so we'll go back here so here's the select button here and that should bring up the exposure compensation and then you can go up up to two stops and then go back down 
I don't know if you guys can even see this, but uh, it's going back down to two stops. So you have your exposure compensation there, which is really nice. Uh, and that's access, you know, again, to the select button, uh, manual focus button, self-timer, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff you can get to um, within the menu system. And again, the menu system is very, uh, very difficult to use. But uh, uh, once, once you kind of get the hang of it, you, you know, you can get your basic functions around there, and you can really, you know, get some productive shooting. And this camera really... It meters beautifully. The lens is awesome. I really can't say enough about this camera. Uh, Digital Rev uh, TV uh, just did a, a, a matchup between the uh, Konica Hexar AF, this camera, and the Leica M9, which is uh, Leica's you know eight thousand dollar camera, um, you know, and another three thousand dollars for their lens. Uh, so you're looking ten, eleven thousand dollars for the Leica. And frankly, I like the pictures coming off of the Hexar better, and I, I think they they look you know a lot more rich and the color was beautiful and uh, I think it was really uh, it really held its own so you know pick one of these up off eBay or you know go into the one of the websites or something like that and look around for them they're out there um, and there's a few different versions uh, the first version that came out was a black version which came with the stealth mode this is what they call the classic this is actually a rare uh, sort of limited edition model. There's only 2,000 of these made, 1,000 made in Japan, and the other 1,000 distributed to the rest of the world. Um, so it's sort of a rare edition, and it's silver with uh, uh, black, and, uh, and it has the smooth grip. Um, the, they, they then came out with a, uh, another s silver edition called the Silver, and uh, that had a more of a textured surface, which I actually prefer a little bit. Um, and it was a, a silver uh, camera. That camera did not come normally with the stealth mode uh, enabled. I guess there were some licensing or, or uh, copyright issues associated with that. But there is information on the web as how to enable that on the camera. And again, you know, using the user interface, it's kind of uh, difficult and, and crazy to get to, but it is possible. Uh, they also came out with some rarer editions, a gold one, and what, what they called rhodium, and a titanium edition. So uh, there were some, limit, you know, a bunch of limited editions out there, and they're, you know, they're all uh, just great cameras. And they uh, they did have one with a data back. I do not, I'm not a, a fan of data backs at all, but if you're if you're looking for that kind of thing, it, it is out there. Um, so again, the Hexar AF, great camera, very quiet, great street shooter. I, I've touted it on my website as the best street shooter ever and I really think it is. Uh, autofocus, great lens, uh, quiet, uh, you know, it, it's, it's the, the autofocus is fast enough, you know, for, for most work that you're doing. Um, you know, I also have Leica, I have a Leica M6 that I use uh, and I love the camera, you know, it's one of my favorite cameras, but you know, all in all, as far as the total package, I really think the, the Konica Hexar it really is just it, it's it's hard to hard to beat. It really is more this more than the sum of its parts. It's uh, it is a great camera, and uh, if you ever get a chance, take a look at one. Um, you know, if if you have a whole bunch of M glass and stuff like that, you know, stick with your M cameras. Um, you know, there, this is not an interchangeable lens camera. So, uh, you know, it is a fixed lens. It really is sort of the predecessor to the Fuji X100 and uh, I compare the two on my website as well oldcamreview.blogspot.com and I really think the X100 is a modern version of or digital version of the Konica Hexar AF so anyway check it out oldcamreview.blogspot.com I appreciate you uh, checking this out and uh, any constructive criticism I uh, appreciate and that's about it if you guys have any requests let me know again Brian oldcamreview.blogspot.com